the topic for today is introduction to microprocessor and microcontroller a microprocessor or microcontroller is a device capable of continuously fetching and executing instructions as long as it is not switched off in today's video we are going to introduce microprocessor and microcontroller first we'll introduce the terms used in microprocessor literature then we'll see what is the basic computer and microcomputer and then we'll discuss the block diagram of microprocessor and microcontroller let us start welcome to our channel engineering and technology for you if you are not subscribed to our channel kindly subscribe and press the bell icon the topic for today is introduction to microprocessor and microcontroller let us start with the terms the first term is bit so bit is nothing but a digit of binary number and it can be 0 or 1 it will have two values 0 or 1 then bit size now this bit size of a microprocessor it refers to number of bits that can be processed simultaneously by the basic arithmetic circuits of the microprocessor so we have different bit size for different microprocessors. Generally, the bit size will be 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit, 64 bit, and so on. Then the next term is nibble. So, a 4 bit binary number is called a nibble. We have taken the example 1001. This is one nibble. So, when we say 8 bit, then it will have two nibbles, the lower nibble and the upper nibble. Then the next term is byte. Byte is nothing but 8 bit binary digit. So this is the unit which is important. Then the next term is kilobyte. So kilobyte means here. Uh, a collection of 10 24 bytes is called kilobyte so 2 raised to 10 is equal to 10 24 so 2 raised to 10 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte then the next term is megabyte a collection of 10 24 kilobytes is 1 megabyte so 2 raised to 20 bytes is equal to 1 megabyte then gigabytes so this is collection of 1024 megabytes so that is equivalent to 2 raised to 30 bytes then the next term is word so word is nothing but say uh, 16 bit binary digit is called as a word so here we have shown a 16 bit digit 1000 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0. so all these are 16 bits and why the grouping will be a 4 because that will represent the hexadecimal number so this represents 8 then this represents f then this is a and this is 1 so in this way the word will be represented with 16 bits then double word it is 32 bit binary number then the next term is data information operated by an instruction of a program is called data the size of data is specifies as bit byte word etc then the next term is address address is the identification number in a binary for location of data in memory or IO port. See, the data will be stored in memory or it will be available on the input output port. So, the address is the identification number for that location. For example, the data in memory will be identified with a, a 16 bit address 2000H. 
similarly data on any port input output port will be identified with 8 bit address 81h so the address is the identification number for the location of the data then next term is memory word size see the memory will be organized in the form of words so the word size of the memory is nothing but the size of binary information that can be stored in a memory location so generally this will be 8 bit so that's why the memory we are uh, say we say that we have 10 GB of memory, 8 GB of memory, 16 GB of memory, 32 GB of memory. So this memory is in bytes. So the word size here is 8 bit. Then the next term is bus. A bus is nothing but a group of conducting lines. So it may carry data, address, or control signal. So but a group is called as a bus if you refer the data bus data bus will be a group of conducting lines that will carry the data then address bus will be group of conducting lines that will carry the address now address data these are nothing but the binary numbers but then here the processor should know the difference between them that's why there is a separate bus for data and add then the control bus group of lines that is that carries the control signals now there are various control signals for reading writing then memory operations so uh, that will form a control bus so here we have shown the read write these are the signals for the reading and writing and this is the address latch in it ALE signal so it will have different control signals then the next term is central processing unit basically this is the processing unit in control which will be the brain of the computer then the next term is cpu bus so the group of conducting lines that are directly connected to the cpu or microprocessor is called as the cpu then the system bus when we say the system bus it will have the data address and the control signals combined so in a microcomputer system that is called as the system bus then the next term is rom that is read only memory so this read only memory devices are memory devices whose contents are retained even after removing the power supply that's why it is called as the read only memory we will not be able to write anything to this memories only we are able to read then the next term is RAM or read write memory. So, random access memory or read write memory. So, it is a type of semiconductor memory in which particular location can be erased or written with new data at any time. That's why it is called as the read write memory. And uh, since the access is random it is called as the random access you can uh, retrieve any location uh, data from any location then these memory units are volatile so here the meaning of volatile is that when we remove the power to the chip the contents will be lost. then let us see the function of a microprocessor or microcontroller 
see the basic function of microcell or microcontroller is fetching and execute so fetching means bring the instructions from the storage area or memory and execution means performing logical or control operation on the instruction so here we have shown instructions in memory now this is the first instruction so it is represented as 11110000 so this is nothing but 8 bit binary number so it represents an instruction or the operation code of an instruction so this will be fetched means it will be taken from here from the memory and it will be brought into the microprocessor and then it will be processed first the instruction will be decoded and then as per the instruction the operation will be carried out by the microprocessor so that we call it as the execution of the instruction the microprocessor will execute the instruction and give us the result if the instruction says that add two numbers then microprocessor will perform the addition operation with the help of the arithmetic and logic unit and it will give us the result then first let us see the difference between microcomputer microprocessor and microcontroller because these are the three terms which will always confuse you now the first term microcomputer so a computer with microprocessor as its cpu so is a microcomputer it will include memory input and output that is the io so there are three basic elements in a microcomputer cpu memory and io so sometimes we uh, take input and output separately so there will be four elements then let us see the microcontroller it's a silicon chip which includes microprocessor memory input output in a single packet or integrated system. so let us understand this so microcontroller is micro say, where we are having all these things on an integrated circuit that is in a single chip and microprocessor it is nothing but a silicon chip which includes the arithmetic logic unit register circuit and control circuits so it will make a cpu it will just make a cpu it will not have the memory and input output so that is the basic difference whereas the microcontroller it has the microprocessor or cpu memory input output all these things on a single chip so that we call it as the so that is the basic difference between these three then let us see the block diagram of a basic computer system basic computer system it consists of the cpu then memory so generally the memory will be ram and rom and input devices and output devices. and all these are connected to each other with the help of data bus control bus and the address bus so the data bus is bidirectional you can see here then the control bus is also bidirectional because it is for the control signals which will be flowing in both the directions whereas the address bus will come from the cpu and then it will be given to the memory input devices and then here we are showing personal computer or desktop computer because it is a microcomputer and we'll show the different input devices for this so here you see the keyboard mouse microphone 
these are the input devices for a desktop computer then speakers and monitor these are the output device and this is the system unit which has the cpu there is a motherboard and on the motherboard the cpu is installed memory will also be installed in the motherboard so it will form a microcomputer system then let us see the examples of input devices just to give you an idea about the input device so we have the keyboard all of you know it you have used it then there is a numeric keypad so the keypad with only numbers is called as the numeric then there is a mouse which is a pointing device then we have the remote control so the computer can accept input through the remote control then next input device is the joystick to use for the video game then we have the touch screen which act as a input device generally we have used it in atms then scanner scanner is another input device when you want to do the document as input then we use the scanner you have to scan the document it will be stored in the computer memory then graphics tablet that is another input device so as you move your tablet here it will uh, give a input to the computer the microphone is another input for the voice signal then digital camera and webcam these are the inputs for the video and images or photographs then light pen that is uh, it is a interactive device which will directly give input to the computer then here we are shown the examples for the output device you have already uh, the tft monitor that is the screen which is available today before that we had the crt monitor was having the crt cathode ray tube then here we have the laser printer and the inkjet printers the inkjet printer generally color printers are there whereas the laser uh, they are also available in color and uh, black and white but the colors are very then we have the dot matrix print that is for the computer stationery printing on the computer will have 80 columns or 132 columns then we have speakers which is the output device so here we have shown two speakers with the system generally this will be used for output then we have plotters the plotters if the maps and other precise things are to be taken output we use the plotter in multimedia projectors that is another good device for projection then let us go to the block diagram of a microcomputer now already we have seen the block diagram of a computer now only difference a computer with microprocessor as its cent cpu processing unit central processing so that is called as the microcomputer it will include the memory input device and the output device so microprocessor so this is synonymous with the cpu or microcell unit so mpu is nothing but microcell unit but it is the same as cpu or micro so it will perform the same function as the central processing unit that is the fetching and execution of instruction so all these uh, memory input devices and output device they are also here they are connected with the help of data bus control bus and address bus so that will be used for the communication 
then let us go into the say microcell base system it is called as the microcomputer so when we add uh, this is the microprocessor then when we add input output and memory to this it becomes a microcomputer so the micro let us see what is inside the microcell so in the microcell we have the arithmetic and logic unit alu then different resistors that is called as the resistor array so these are the internal resistors for various operations in the micro and then we have the control part so that is used for uh, controlling all the operations in the micro and when we connect the input output and the memory rom and ram to the microprocessor with the help of this system bus address data and control then we call it as the microcell base system it is a microcomputer it becomes a micro so the desktop is a design in this way will have the microprocessor which is on the motherboard and then the input and output devices they can be added as per our choice and then the memory will be rom and which will be inside the a system unit in the on the desktop then functional block of a microprocessor we go still deep into the microprocessor already we have seen that it consists of the alu then register array and the control here we have added some more things that is the instruction decoder program counter and flag register so here the program counter it is used for storing the address of the next instruction to be executed program counter is also called as the instruction pointer so the address will be taken out from the address bus and the address bus will represent the address for the instruction to be executed and the data bus will actually take the instruction from the memory and then it will be loaded into the will be given to the instruction decoder the instruction decoder will decode the instruction and then will pass the information to the timing and control unit and then timing and control unit will generate the particular signals for the operation or execution of that instruction now suppose we have instruction for adding two numbers so the addition will be performed in the alu so the numbers will be stored in the registers in the register array and the addition will be performed and the suppose there is a carry generated in the addition then we have the flag register which stores the different flags which represent the status of the result of the arithmetic and logic so flag register has number of flip flops which are called as the flags so we have generally the carry flag zero flag line flag auxiliary carry flag and parity flag so these are some of the flags which are stored in the flag register then apart from this we have the control bus which carries the control signal so this is how the macro sir will function with this functional then let us go further the macro control the macro controller as we have seen it is the cpu memory input output on a single chip but along with that there are support devices such as the timers 
a 2d converter serial input output and other device so if all these things are placed in a single integrated circuit we call it as the micro so it will have the working system cpu memory and input output on a single chip that's why we'll be able to directly use the microcontroller with the help of a single chip so when we are developing projects and uh, at that time and applications microcontroller will be more useful and that's why it has become more popular there are number of micro controllers from various manufacturers the intel has mcs family mcs 51 family then there is a big 18 family from microchip then avr so these are the some of the popular microcontroller and again the families they have number of members for the micro so if you want to say, design a robot then you just take a microcontroller because it has all the things the cpu memory and input output so directly you can connect the say, motors to the input output ports and control them with the help of these support devices so it will work easily so when we are using the microcontroller then at that time we generally embed it into different electronic gadgets such as tv a uh, printer or even they are used in the vehicles cars for various different operations so that we call it as the embedded c when it is the microcontroller is put in another device it is called as the embedded so the microprocessor and microcontroller they have number of applications which you can use them day to day so with this we come to the end of this video if you have any questions you can contact me on facebook twitter gmail or instagram then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for the videos uploaded from our channel and thanks for watching have a nice day